Afternoon, everybody. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners on the land on which we meet today and pay my respects to the elders past and present. OK, so I'm going to talk today around the role or the impact that design has had on public realm in Brimbank since 2008. There's Brimbank, if you weren't sure where it sits in terms of Melbourne. And I'm going to talk about strategies and partnerships and how um, we're, we're changing the capacity and the functionality of our public space. So there's Brimbank again. So I've zoomed in a bit close this time. There's, you know, 205,000 residents. Um, 58 speak a language other than English at home. We've got 62% canopy cover with heat vulnerable suburbs. And we have a lot of rivers. So we've got the Maramurong River coming down there. We've got Jackson's Creek. We've got Coroy Creek. We've got Taylor's Creek coming into the Maramurong River. We've got Jones Creek. We've got Stony Creek. Here's little old Stony Creek here. There's a little bit there. There's a little bit there. There's a little bit there. And then it disappears and it comes out there again. And probably once upon a time, it would have gone all the way up into St Albans. And so I'm going to talk a bit about Stony Creek. And, we've, and the green blobs are our asset, our, our Wasad assets at the moment. We've got about 140. Um, oops. So just in terms of heat vulnerability, on the left is from the Monash study, that red ring of heat vulnerability of our middle ring suburbs. And that's sort of um, picked up there on the right, which is the ambulance call-outs that we get on days over 33 degrees. So we know that we've got heat vulnerable suburbs um, in the, in the, within our municipality. And I'm going to be talking about just Stony Creek right there. But first of all, I thought I'd talk about, here's our strategies that deal with green infrastructure at Brimbank. I'm going to talk about the top three, creating better parks, greening the west, and our sustainable water strategy. Um, so since 2000, in 2008, Council adopted Creating Better Parks as a $34 million transformation of our park network. We had terrible parks. No one went there. There was no destination. There was no functionality. Since then, we've upgraded 99 and spent $26.5 million. And that plan just shows you where we've done that. The blue stars are our flagship parks. The red stars... The red circles are our suburban parks and the orange ones are our neighbourhood parks. So we've been really busy just trying to make destination in our park network. And here's a good example. Isabella Williams Memorial Reserve on the Coralwright Creek, 2008. Summer 2008, there's Coralwright Creek. Here's the reserve. There's a protected grassland up here. Um, there's no way to get into the reserve for the local community. And when we talked to these people around here, they, they were scared to go in there because all these lines are made by trail bikes and the occasional um, car that was stolen and, and torched in that space. So, you know, really horrible space. That's what it looks like today. So we've done, you know, turned it into a destination, um, created a, a place for people to go. And one of our first attempts at water sensitive urban design quite a few years ago, that mound now has 5,000 tube stock growing up from our planting, our greening the west stuff. So we've really, you know, done this at various scales right across the municipality. So in 2016, we said to the community, what do you think about creating better parks? What, what, how has it affected your life? We had 239 people uh, respond to this survey and over 80% of them said that it had changed their life. And if I just read this comment... It's great to see council investing in the community in the form of parks. It makes me feel proud of where we live and encourages me to get outdoors more often with the kids. So we've heard it a few times today and that really made it clear to us that investment in public infra in social infrastructure in our parks um, has a positive impact on mental and physical well-being and, you know, about how people feel and where they live. So... Fantastic. So then 2011, Green in the West came along. Um, Ian mentioned the, the death rates related to the fire and the heat wave. That's what drove Green in the West. City West Water, fantastic. Anne Barker at the time, the managing director, kicked this off. She really wanted, and that's City West Water as a water retailer, they would really wanted to be, they wanted to make sure that their clients actually had a great place to live. So really fantastic leadership. So the think tank happened in 2011. Um, launched in 2013 and council, in terms of our role, I was one of those persons been involved in Green and the Rest the whole time. We endorsed it straight away and it's a huge partnership. So it's all the Western region councils, even Hume, so a bit of North in there as well. I think City of Melbourne in there somewhere too, aren't they, Ian? Yeah. yeah. 
and state government and community, other community groups. So they, they, it's all about livability, enhanced livability, all, of, all around greening and how does water help do that? Oh, sorry. Okay, so Greening the West has brought $20 million worth of uh, money into the West for a variety of projects. Upper Stony Creek, we've had a really big, we had a one million tree program funded from the federal government. We've got Greening the Pipeline, which is the, the, the outfall sewer line, which is now called, well, also Federation Trail, which is a 27 kilometre pr project to green that whole pipeline that Melbourne Water are doing. And over here on the right, that image there really just shows what council has been doing. So we've done around 200,000 trees since 2015. We made an urban forest strategy that tells us we have to do 700,000 trees over 30 years to go from 6.2% canopy cover to 30. So we've done a couple of hundred real quickly from state and federal government funding, which is good. Planning scheme changes around the provision of trees in multi-unit developments, and we've got a website. So Greening the West has sort of filtered into our into Brimbank quite well. Um, but a big one is the Stony Creek part Partnership, and that's, the, that's um, the people involved in that project. It's an $11.35 million partnership. And we've been working on this, particularly Brimbank, Melbourne Water and City West Water since, I don't know, about 2013, a very long time. And we're going, to be kick, we're going to be turning soil next week. So it's a really complex project. It's a really complex partnership. We've got poli, poli, uh, federal and state government, so both sides of politics contributing to this project. And what we're trying to do, here's our site. Here's Sunshine North, this heat-vulnerable suburb. Here's our site. It's this concrete drain that comes down here, wraps around here. Um, here's where City West Water used to be, and they moved on. And that what prompt, that's what prompted this idea of how couldn't there be a legacy around water and greening for this community. This is now owned by Development Victoria. So the pipe continues on around, notice, and there's a retarding basin and goes on down into Sunshine. Remember I showed you those fragments of Stony Creek? It also goes up around behind the hospital. So when you get into it, there it is. Someone this morning said something about mono, mono... Um, functional infrastructure. So they're, 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 that's a pretty good example of that, I think. But there is someone going for their Sunday stroll, and I, and I, I watch that person because you might not be able to see, but there's these little weep holes along the walls on each side. Now, the people from the local community told us that they actually catch yabbies out of those little weep holes and go fishing for Murray cod. So incredible, because that's what it is on a normal day. That's what it is when it rains. So I don't know how they, which, which um, environment the yabbies like the most. It'd be uh, interesting to understand that. But anyway, that's how it looks. That's the view across the retarding basin, just a sort of big, flat, um, simple landscape. And this is what we want to do to it. Oh, this is what we're going to do to it. So the functional, this functional layout was led by Melbourne Water and involved... Um, City West Water and Brimbank, and um, what this realised was that we could naturalise this creek, we needed to get a bit of land, and we could turn it into a natural creek with three kilometres of walkways and a whole wetland system. Interesting, the person who was leading the design of this from Melbourne Water, Mike Brown, um, was part of the original engineering team that concreted the creek 50 years prior. So that says to me there's a big change happening. And that's fantastic. So, you know, it's all about making our suburbs less vulnerable, reducing heat. We're going to have an irrigation system along that corridor that gets fed from the harvested water that we can turn that system on when we know there's a heat wave coming so that we can try to cool this community. Um, yeah, and works are starting next week. So, gosh, it's going to be a big week next week. So that just shows you some of the details. Um, another project, so... Um, this is um, in Sunshine, um, Sunvale Community Park. This was an old school site, primary school, that um, state government disposed of. We bought the, the coloured zone and the, and the non-coloured zone got sold off to a developer. We um, came up with this master plan for this site and 
part of that master plan was, well, how does that master plan integrate with that development site and, and fit in? But we also saw, well, actually, there's a great opportunity to capture stormwater. So we've got funding out of Melbourne Water here to design and install as part of this master plan uh, the, the picking up of all the stormwater from the streets and, more importantly, from all those town, from that development site, treat it in the park, store it in a tank and take the water from the playground area and irrigate that park. So it's one of the first times that we have actually a passive park that's going to have sustainable water supply for a long period of time. There's the tank. That's what it looks like today. So um, in terms of integrated water management, we now have an integrated water management team in council. That's a result of the, uh, the water strategy document that I mentioned earlier, made up of engineers, landscape architects, maintenance people, risk people, asset people, and so forth. And we look for opportunities in streets. So this is Dorset Street. Sunvale is just over here. This is how it used to be. There was one pedestrian footpath in this street, council car park here. And this is where Stony Creek used to be down through here. And it was a mess for pedestrians and everybody it was dominated by cars. That's what it looks like now. So now we have pedestrian corridors on both sides. We've got rain gardens along here. We've got people coming through here. And we've picked up all the stormwater from in here and goes into this rain garden now. So this is what we're trying to do as a council with our integrated water management team. That's what it looked like. That's what it is and um, now people stroll, walk and are comfortable in that space. And to finish off quickly, going back to this idea of creating better parks, that was what was originally here. Creating better parks came and did this and planted it out. Green in the West has come in and added another layer of dense planting that's still quite juvenile. But now, because with funding from Melbourne Water, we're looking at this idea, well, how do we do the same thing here at, at one of our suburban parks? How do we get the stormwater out of the, the ground, into the park, add, and again be able to use that stormwater for, for irrigation and add biodiversity? And it's all about water-sensitive urban design, but it's also about bio, biodiversity-sensitive uh, urban design. So having the two go hand-in-hand in, hand in the park networks, much more resilient, much more appropriate for 21st century climate change. And to finish off, um, yeah, someone said that you know trees are also about moments and magic, and that's sunrise at Selwyn Park in Albion. Thank you.